So it's been two years since Gully Kid released the original King Kong Pro controller. That controller was quite okay at the time for what it has to offer but since then, we have a lot of new controllers entered into the market with a lot of new features. Gully Kid released a sequel to this controller called the King Kong 2 Pro. This controller here comes with a bunch of different upgrades and just spoiler alert, I really like this controller. So let me share my experience with you about what's upgraded and also why I like this controller. Now inside this box, what you get is the usual. So the box here is really simple and then you get an accessories box. Inside here is just a USB Type-C cable. So let me just show you this. The Type-C cable is pretty long and it's flat too. If you want to use it, you can. And then a hard shell plastic case with the controller inside and also a humongous piece of user manual which we will need this later. When you look at this thing, this controller here, you might say, hey, it's exactly the same as the original King Kong 2 Pro, right? In a way, yes, because if you look at it, the shape and size is exactly the same. However, the material and texture is completely different compared to the original King Kong Pro. So gone is the soft touch material on the King Kong Pro. It's now using some fancier texture on the King Kong 2 Pro. I don't know what's it called. And, and also, to improve our grip of our sweaty gaming sessions, the King Kong 2 Pro now has this kind of dimple texture. I'm not sure what's this called, but it's at the back of the grip here. So when you grip it like this, and then your hands start sweating, you are still able to grip the controller properly. But those aren't the only upgrades done to the King Kong 2 Pro though. Uh, actually, earlier this year, Gully Kid announced that they are finally ending joystick drift, at least they claim to, by utilizing something called the patented electromagnetic stick. Technically, it's a joystick made out of pulse sensor effect, so that's a pretty interesting implementation of technology actually. So hall sensors, if you don't know, it works by technically, well, you have a line of electrons moving and marching on from one terminal to another and then when the magnet moves near to that line of electrons then it starts to sway to one side so once the electrons start to sway to one side you can detect the difference in voltages hence hall effect so by using this idea Gully Kid is able to make a joystick out of that hall sensing effect and this is the joystick itself Thank you Gully Kid for sending yet another unit of this joystick so we can take a look at it. And by purely comparing joystick to joystick, this is the traditional potentiometer joystick. So it has metal brushes across each other to detect the difference in voltage. And this one, since it's brushing against metal, it's a lot stiffer and it's also a lot sandier and rougher to roll it like this. And it's also prone to joystick drift if the potentiometer has any shot or something like that or misdetections. But for a hall sensing joystick, it's a lot smoother and it feels a lot, how do you say this, a bit weightless. And we can also prove that this controller is using a hall sensor joystick is because when we put a magnet near to its joystick, we can see that the center point is not so center anymore. And besides just the joystick, Gully Kit also improved the face buttons here. So traditionally what we have is just a rubber pad to connect two points together. But this time, Gully Kit made this thing here. I'm not quite sure what this is called, but it's kind of like a mechanical keyboard switch. It's kind of reminiscent of those switches like Cherry MX Brown, those kind of tactile mechanical keyboard switches. And essentially, it's still the same idea. It connects two terminals together with the help of the graphic pad at the back. But the way you actuate this button though, that is where you will get a very different feeling when you're playing games. And those are just physical upgrades done on the controller. Now, what about the software, the features, so to speak? Well, we gotta talk about the true multi-device connectivity first. So you see at the top of this controller here, we have a total of four different modes that we can connect to. So I connected it to my Switch, obviously, and then X input to my PC via Bluetooth, and then the Android logo into my phone just for fun. And wow, it actually remembers every single devices I have connected to per mode. So what I'm trying to say here is that 
maybe let's just say I'm playing Mario Kart on my Switch or something like that and oops someone called me for a game of Halo Infinite I can just hold this mode button change it to PC mode and then it immediately connects to my PC and I don't have to pair and go into the Windows Bluetooth settings menu again and pair it yet once more so this is a huge improvement even though it doesn't sound like a lot it's just these little things that matter a lot it even has the feature to wake the switch up from sleep directly. Granted, this is not as simple as the other controllers like the GameSir T4 Mini where we just hold a power button and then it wakes up from sleep. For the Gully Kid King Kong 2 Pro, we have to press either one of the face buttons to wake up the controller and then press the home button once to wake the switch up from sleep. It's not as direct or equal as the Joy-Cons but it works. And back to the whole sensing joysticks for a moment. In the user manual here, it states that we can actually disable the dead zone of the joysticks. What? These whole sensors are very sensitive. A dead zone is to help ensure that no stray inputs from any random objects, for example, my phone's magnet on the speakers can actually make the joysticks move. So to prevent this from happening, dead zones are introduced. But Sometimes you might want to disable dead zones, for example, if you want to play competitive shooter games, then dead zones are kind of to your detriment because if you move the joysticks just a little bit, then if dead zone is enabled, it won't be detected. And there are a lot more features to be found in the user manual, but I'm not going to use all of it, so I'll just show you a picture of the user manual here. And by the way, Gully Kit is also continuously bringing new features via firmware updates that you can download for free on their website. Even the original King Kong Pro controller back from like 2019, I think, this controller is still getting firmware updates. That's amazing. And I have been playing a lot of games using the King Kong 2 Pro and I literally have no argument that this is one of the highest quality controllers that I've used so far. I've even played Hades on PC using this controller and that game requires a lot of zero latency inputs with very high precision button mashing and so far the ABXY buttons managed to register every single press that I've done and throughout my button mashing marathon I encountered no issues. Though my fingers are a little bit fatigued because these buttons are a little bit stiffer compared to some other controllers like the Xbox One X for example. And speaking of the Xbox One X controller, well, I modded this controller with trigger locks and the travel distance here is a lot shorter if I use the trigger lock so that I don't have to make the button all the way to the bottom just for it to detect and that actually saves time if I just want to, you know, input something quickly. And Gully Kit King Kong 2 Pro actually has something similar by adjusting the sensitivity of the trigger here. And actually this trigger is also using all sensors so you can just magnify the effects in software so that it can act like a, you know, trigger lock. Okay, so at the end of the day though, the Gully Kit King Kong 2 Pro, it does do a lot of basic functionalities just right. For example, waking the switch from sleep is one of the features that very few controllers actually can do and this is one of them and the ability to remember what devices I have paired for each mode. Well, I would consider this to be the first true multi-platform controller since it can remember what I have paired before so I don't have to mess around with the pairing menu ever. That's, that's just a huge bonus for me. And for the price though, I still don't have the price for this controller yet but for as far as what I can find, it should be around 200 ringgit or maybe about 50 US dollars around that price range. I can't confirm with you yet, so I'll leave all of the information on the screen if I have it. And the King Kong 2 Pro actually comes with another non-pro version which does have a few differences here and there, but you still get the same hall sensing joystick and also the same, I don't know what's this called, the, the very tactile face buttons 
and the only thing that I don't like about the non-pro version as far as I can tell is the texture because that non-pro version of the King Kong 2 controller is not the same in terms of the material and that's it that's all we have to share with you about the Gully Kid King Kong 2 Pro controller I really like this controller and before I forget I should also mention that Amiibo functionality is still here so yeah it's just an upgrade over the original King Kong Pro controller and they have done so many things right with this controller and I love it so yeah if you have any questions leave them down in the comment section below and we'll see you guys in the next video